everybody. I'm Allie and this is my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, July 19th. And this week, Kane went around to everyone saying his goodbyes as he's going to leave Genoa City. Um, now, just to start off, I wanted to ask, I'm pretty sure that this is totally just a plot device and that I have nothing to worry about, um, but I haven't seen any casting updates that have said that Daniel Goddard, Goddard is leaving the show, so if you know anything about that topic, please uh, post a comment and uh, let me know what the status of his contract is. He's not actually leaving the show, right? I don't, I don't believe that for a minute, but, but just to reassure me, if you could leave me a comment and let me know, that would be beautiful. Uh, but still, he's, he's going around to everyone, Kane, this week, saying his goodbyes. Um, he went to Lily, tried to give her some closure on their relationship. Um, unfortunately, she went from, think, you know, thinking that she was losing her husband to thinking that she's pregnant, and now thinking that she has ovarian cancer, um, We'll definitely talk more about that next week um, as more starts to develop on that front. Um, but either way, she still loves Kane. She still needs him. And I personally hope um, that she reaches out to him uh, before he climbs onto his horse and rides off into the sunset. Yeah, the idea of Kane on a horse actually is, is quite, quite sexy. Yes, um, so I'm not even going to pretend that I'm unbiased on this topic. I am a Kane fan. I, I, as I said in the comments last week, I'm completely biased because I want to have wild and crazy sex with Kane. So <laughs> I'm willing to forgive him of pretty much anything at this point. So, um, so just know <laughs> that I'm coming from a Kane loving perspective. Um, but this week, he also went to go see Jill and Catherine, um, just to tell them that he loves them and that his feelings for them were true, and um, to face them and to apologize for what he did, and um, finally to tell him that they were leaving. And Philip uh, the Third, the real Philip, is standing there, kind of pleading Kane's case, like, "Look at this guy! Don't you want him to be part of your family?" As Kane's just standing in the doorway, just looking like a kicked puppy dog, and um, he he gets ready to leave and, and Jill has this moment where she almost reaches out to him and she's like, Kane, don't go! And then Chance comes into the scene and Kane gets kind of brushed by the wayside and um, he ends up leaving. Um, there was uh, also this week the development that he sold the bar to Mackenzie, so I thought that was interesting. Um, kind of surprised that Mackenzie would even want to own that. Um, she's, uh, she's gone from helping people in Dafur uh, to uh, feeding into people's addictions in America at a bar. <laughs> so that's a pretty big um, change for her, not necessarily a healthy change. Um, but I was uh, surprised to see um, Kane go talk to Amber, actually, because she had every right in the world to want to um, just rub it in his face uh, because he had uh, been so judgmental of her when she had been telling lies about their marriage, and now he's in a position now where he's the one that's lying. So Amber had every right to kind of jump in there and, um, and kind of uh, ream him, which she did a little bit of. But uh, still, Kane, you just gotta hand it to him. He's facing these people, wanting to um, kind of open himself up and expose himself and talk about the lies that he told. And he was encouraging Amber to not hide the truth about her past from Daniel, because uh, it, it certainly has a possibility of coming back to bite her, um, as it usually does. So we'll have to see um, if, if, if Amber takes his advice, uh, Kane's advice and decides to fess up about her past with Deacon. Um, we'll have to see. But, you know, say what you will about Kane, but he's really owning his mistake. From, from my perspective, I feel that, you know, he's trying to face the people that he's hurt instead of just hiding. He could have really just left town forever, um, never to be seen or heard from again, not spoken to anyone, um, but it, instead he insists on putting himself out there and putting his story out there, and I just feel like Kane made a huge mistake, but we all make huge mistakes, and I think that what's what sets someone apart is their ability to reconcile it. So, in my book, Kane is a better Philip Chancellor than the original. Now, the original Philip Chancellor, Philip III, um, on the other hand, is 
in my opinion, just a sad, sad man. I mean, this week he confesses to Jill and Catherine that being gay was part of the reason um, that he wanted to leave GC so badly. But you know what? Being gay is not an excuse. You know, he, he, you know, being gay and on top of that, not feeling comfortable talking about it is not an excuse. I mean, um, Catherine made the really great point that, you know what, Philip, you never even gave us a chance to reject you. You just assumed that we would um, <clears throat> not accept your lifestyle and that we would try to deny you. Um, and, and when really, I think that you know, it was Philip that was not able to accept himself. You know, it was him that wasn't comfortable with who he was. And we don't know if Jill or Catherine actually would have been able um, to accept it or not. But he never gave them that chance. Um, and another really good point that Catherine made was that if Philip hated his life so much, he could have just moved. He didn't have to fake his own death. You know, I mean, that's just, it's, that's absurd and ridiculous. And on top of it all, I can't even believe this. He actually said that if he had everything to do all over again, that he would probably make the same decisions. What the hell? Can you even believe that? I mean, at least Cain takes responsibility for his actions. Philip is trying to justify what he did over and over again. Um, and to me, this just feels like the actions of a very selfish and sad person. And that's what I think he is, you know? I, I really can't even find one redeeming quality about Philip. Not one! And, you know, Jill, and especially Nina, who I love, um, but Jill and Nina are just tripping over themselves to welcome Philip III back into their, their family with open arms. And I can totally see him taking advantage of that. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I have a not trust nature, but I just, I can see him taking advantage of them, and at least someone, Catherine, is being sensible about the whole thing, and, and um, really just kind of giving it to Philip and, and not accepting him at face value, and I appreciate that, because even with the truth about his depression issues and his sexuality revealed, he just seems like he doesn't want to be there, like he doesn't love them, like he doesn't care, um, and he doesn't want to be part of their family, so why is he? Well now, Nina and Philip's son, Chance, is onto the scene. Side note, I think this guy is really cute. I'm looking forward to um, getting to know him. He's huge! Have you noticed he just towers over everyone else in the scene? He's like really, I don't know, maybe it was just the perception. Maybe he was standing on something, but he was like really, really tall. Wow. Um, but he's very cute, and I can't wait to get him out of the uniform and shake this whole military thing and uh, fold him into life into Genoa City. Now, I'm surprised by the Philip III chance meeting. Um, it was kind of anticlimactic, don't you think? I mean, Chance had absolutely no reaction to the fact that his father was still alive. He thought that his father was dead for his entire life. Now he finds out that the guy's alive and he has zero reaction. And Philip III, Philip is standing there seeming to care less that his son is is right in front of him. I mean, there was absolutely no reaction. There was a handshake between the two of them, but that's it. I mean, I kind of felt like Chance should pick Philip up and throw him through the wall. <laughs> that's what I would have liked to see. Um, oh well. Maybe that'll happen next week as uh, Chance finally is able to realize what a scumbag his father really is. Okay, so that's what I think, no holds barred. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys think about this storyline, so leave me a comment. Let me know uh, what your opinion is. I'm probably past the 10 minute mark at this point, so I'm gonna have to post a part two video, so definitely check back and see that there's way more to talk about. So I'll see you guys then.